Welcome back to Girl Talk. We are at Madison East Toyota today and we'll chat with them a little bit later. But first we have Ann Jelinek and you are with Pulse Kettlebells and Yoga. Yeah. I'm really excited to talk about this because I've never tried kettlebells. Oh, That's something I'm totally not familiar with. Something I've kind of been intimidated with my whole life. And you don't usually hear kettlebells and yoga in the same sentence It's either. a really <laughs> interesting combination, but I could see how those two things maybe could work well together and kind of in harmony. Um, so tell us a little bit about your wellness journey and how that helped you create Pulse. Yeah, so I started in the fitness industry um, in the early, like mid to 2000s, okay. and realized that there was this massive gap in the industry for people who had struggled with eating disorders, who had body shapes that weren't super traditional. Um, I had had a really long history of eating disorders and I got really tired of seeing one body shape, one body type be kind of glorified in the industry and decided mm -hmm. that I really wanted to build a coaching practice in a business around um, building strength and building confidence and kind of offering that. Um, so that was kind of the, the backstory mm -hmm. behind all of it. I love that because I think too often the goal is skinny when yep. the goal should be strong. Yep. The goal should be healthy and confident and yep. feeling good about who you are. That's so. such a good point. Very Thin well is done. not necessarily no, healthy. No, that doesn't yeah. mean yeah. healthy. It's yeah. about being strong and good about, you know, in your body. Yep. Feeling good about who you are. Absolutely. Well, let's start with the basics. Yep. Can you tell us and um, the viewers at home, what is a kettlebell and how do you use it at Pulse? Yes. So a kettlebell looks like a cannonball with a handle. Um, <laughs> it really does. I like that. It's a 200 year old uh, Russian training tool that was brought over oh. to the States um, like mid 90s uh, by a guy named Pavel Tsaruin. Um, and it's really, really super um, efficient, time efficient, space efficient. Um, you only need one or two. Most people who use them at home only need to have one or two bells. Um, and we use them for strength, for conditioning, and for rehab. Um, I use it with a lot of my pain clients as well as uh, strength clients. Okay, ah. and is this something anybody and everybody can use or is it a particular yep. population? No, absolutely. I have like 75, 80 year old clients that use them and wow. you know, 20 to 30 year old endurance athletes that use them. Um, so, so yeah, it's really kind of across the You across don't have to board. be a big Russian dude. No. <laughs> Do you start small and work your way up? You or? can. Um, there's kind of a saying that sometimes uh, heavy fixes things. So when you use a heavier bell, sometimes it will actually fix form or fix technique. Okay. Um, so sometimes. Interesting. Sure. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah, it's one of those things where I always assumed you got to be like super buff already to be able to handle a kettlebell no. so maybe yeah I guess um, the, a misconception with that and I also wanted to ask you about Z Health yeah. and tell us a little bit about that and yeah. who it can help. So we started incorporating Z Health at Pulse. I have a couple of teachers that are certified in it um, in the past probably two years. It's a system of working directly with the nervous system. So oh. when your nervous system is in a frightened or startled state, it will turn off range of motion or it will turn off strength or it will turn on pain. Um, Interesting. So there are ways that you can actually assess and work with the nervous system to either give yourself range of motion, give yourself strength, or turn off pain signals. Um, so we kind of assess and reassess and both in classes and private sessions use that discipline to help people get the best benefit in the shortest amount of time. That is really interesting to me. Yeah. And your, your background in education is actually in that area too, isn't it? It kind of. Actually, my, my background's in PR. I have a degree in oh. PR. <laughs> but the rest of it has been in uh, anatomy and neuroanatomy. Yeah. Yeah. And so the difference between pain and injury is um, really evident in my life right now because my neck hurts and my back hurts, but I didn't necessarily do anything to it. I'm just feeling pain. Can you tell me what the difference is? Yeah, absolutely. So injury usually happens at an acute event, right? Like you tear something or you pull something or there's an actual tear or damage to the tissue, which typically heals pretty quickly within four to six weeks. Right. Pain is your brain telling you something is wrong and it would like something to change. Right. So the question is what needs to change, whether mm -hmm. it's something down the chain um, or whether it's a vision thing or whatever. But yeah. At least you're washing dogs all day. Of course you're neck and your back. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> Leaning over and working with the dogs, that'll get you. Working girl let's, over here. Let's talk a little bit about play. We all know it's great for kids. We wish they would have even more of it. What about for adults? Adults, what about us? Adults need to play. <laughs> Thank Exercise you. Exercise really shouldn't be a drudgery, miserable, horrible thing. It's just happy and it should be fun. Um, play can actually make life a lot easier to manage weight and manage stress and be strong. And, yeah, and go that's play. what you have to offer. Sounds yes. like. Awesome. Go, go do research. What a great mindset and really a mantra to have in mind that adults deserve to play too. Everybody deserves to play. I love it. Angela Nick with Pulse Kettlebells and Yoga. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. We appreciate you being here and we'll be back with more Girl Talk right after this.